Hey guys you are welcome back to the channel. Hope you enjoyed the last video. Today we are going to be talking about the particle accelerator. If there is anything Einstein's theory of relativity and quantum mechanics has taught us, it is that the world doesn't quite behave normally at extremes, say for example when we have extremely high speed or extremely small masses. So, in order for us to study this abnormal behaviors we need something that will bring us closer to this extreme state. I know, when I say particle accelerator, the first thing that will come to your mind is the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. Yes, it is a particle accelerator, it is even the most powerful working particle accelerator we have in the world right now. But talking about particle accelerators generally the LHC is just one of the many we have in the world right now, in fact we have more than 30,000 spread out around the world performing different functions. There may even be one near you now, who knows. Now let's get right into the topic, but before that if you are new to the channel please smash that like and subscribe button below for more science related videos like this. And don't forget the bell notification button too, so that you will get notified anytime we upload a new video. Particle accelerator are machines that accelerates particles like photons, electrons, protons etc. to a very high energy. And there are basically two types, the linear accelerators and the circular accelerators. Linear accelerator propels particles along a straight line, while the other one is along a circular track. The very first particle accelerator was built in 1930, by Ernest Lawrence in the University of California. It accelerated hydrogen ions up to energies of 80,000 electron volts within a chamber less than inches across. Since then technology has really gone a long way creating particles accelerators of brighter beams of particles with greater energies than previously imagined. The LHC at CERN is more than 5 miles in diameter, 17 miles in circumference. After this year's upgrades, the LHC will be able to accelerate protons to 6.5 trillion electron volts. A particle accelerator basically makes use of an electric and magnetic field. The electric field is basically for speeding up and increasing the energy of the particles, while the magnetic field is just to steer and focus the particles. The main parts are, the particle source, the beam pipe through which the particles travels, then we the electromagnets, the targets, detectors, and of course an electrical power system etc. Now, when the particle to be accelerated is released from the particle source, they are steered and focused as they travel through the vacuum in the beam pipe. The vacuum is crucial to maintaining an air and dust free environment for particle to travel without obstructions. The electric fields that are spaced around the accelerator switch from positive to negative at a given frequency, creating radio waves that accelerates the particles. The particles can be directed at a fixed target or they can be made to collide with one another. Then the detectors are there to record and reveal the particles and radiation that are produced by the collision between the particles and the targets. The particle accelerator is not only for research purposes. They are useful in medicines, production industries, and even national security and many more. Accelerators are all over the place, doing a variety of jobs. They may be best known for their role in particle physics research, but their other usefulness includes creating tumor-destroying beams to fight cancer, killing bacteria to prevent foodborne illnesses, developing better materials to produce more effective diapers and many more. In 2010, physicist Stephen Hawking wrote an article for the UK paper The Daily Mail explaining how it might be possible to travel through time. We would just need a particle accelerator large enough to accelerate humans the way we accelerate particles, he said. A person accelerator with the capabilities of the Large Hadron Collider would move its passengers at close to the speed of light. Because of the effects of special relativity, a period of time that would appear to someone outside the machine to last several years would seem to the accelerating passengers to last only a few days. By the time they step off the LHC ride, they would be younger than the rest of us. Hawking wasn't actually proposing we try to build such a machine. But he was pointing out a way that time travel already happens today. For example, particles called muons are normally short-lived. They disintegrate after mere millionths of a second. But when they are accelerated to nearly the speed of light, their lifetimes expand dramatically. 
it seems that these particles are traveling in time, or at least experiencing time more slowly relative to other particles. It is like saying that the closest thing we have to a time machine is a particle accelerator. If you have seen our last upload which is on time dilation, you will understand what I'm trying to say. If you haven't, the link is in the description down below.